Getting the most value from your e-waste often involves understanding how to identify and grade e-waste circuit boards. Come on and dive in with Shark Scrapper as we take a look at the often confusing world of circuit board identification. Today, our disk drive boards, RAM, and gold fingers. Okay, now we're going to talk about hard drives, HDDs, hard disk drive. Board Sort now has two categories of hard drive based on the board, and this is real easy. The HDD low is a SATA connection. So if you see SATA pins, these kind of gold finger looking pins, that's an HDD low. If you see the old IDE type or the pin type, the gold plated pin connectors, that's going to be an HDD high grade board. Now you look at the boards and you say, well, it's, you know, there's some of the same kind of components on the two boards. So, well, boardsort.com has done a lot of research into how much value they can get from each of these. And they've determined that they can get enough value out of the pinned or the IDE ones that it's worth paying you more for those and less for these. So, HDD hard drive boards with the pins, the IDE pins, gold plated pins is high grade. And SATA connection or the gold finger looking things are low grade. Your yard may buy hard drives with the board still on, with the boards off. As with most things, each yard is going to be a little bit different, but generally speaking, hard drive with the board on should pay more than a hard drive with the board removed or punched or shredded. Okay, RAM. Here we see a classic gold fingered RAM. You may have components on either side. Again, this is a pretty high value board for BoardSort.com. Some people want to remove the fingers and you can do that. Uh, BoardSort has a category for RAM that has, had, that has been trimmed, trimmed gold finger. Um, now, sometimes these processors, these IC chips, are covered with a heat spreader or a heat shield, maybe on one side, maybe on both sides. This is another category. It's a little less value. You can try to go through the trouble to take this heat shield off. Frequently when you do that, the IC chips are going to pull off. Now you've got a depopulated RAM card. Uh, so, you know, you got to weigh that. But if you heat this up a little bit with a heat gun, usually they'll just come right off. Uh, so it might be worth your time to pull that off. But that is a category by itself if it's shielded. Yes, you will find RAM sticks that have nothing on them. Blank RAM sticks. These are frequently just space holders inside a PC. There is a category for that as well. And then older PCs will have tin silvered RAM. The fingers, instead of being gold, are tin silvered. So you can see the difference there. Okay, don't get confused with a slot processor and RAM. This used to have a heat shield on it. May have had a fan attached to the heat shield. It came from the slot processor card. This is the actual slot processor right here. So this is a heat sink that's on the slot processor, in this case, a Pentium 2. Uh, this is what takes the place of the chips that go in these sockets now, all right? And over here we have a dual slot processor board. Now in this case, the RAM is still in place, and this RAM is going to be the tin silvered RAM, uh, so the fingers will be tin silvered instead of gold. This has a special category on board sort, and they pay pretty well for these slot processors. So don't get these confused with RAM. The other classification that you're going to find on BoardSort.com is gold finger cards. Now in this case, these are PCI slot cards. BoardSort is calling them gold fingered because not every card with gold fingers that would fit in the gold fingered category is going to be a PCI slot card. The vast majority of them will be. 
Now, in order to get your maximum value from board sort, you want to take off the bracket. You want to take off any heat sinks, any motors, any fans. Just send them the Goldfinger card. Now, it doesn't matter what color it is. Green, red, blue, doesn't matter as long as there are no motors or heat sinks or brackets on them. They have categories if you decide to leave the bracket on, if you decide to leave on a fan or a heat sink, but you're not going to get paid as much money. Don't let a board like this confuse you. Even though it has gold fingers on it, this is not a gold finger card. This is more likely a high-grade telecom, maybe a low-grade telecom. So if it's a large board with gold fingers on it, always check to see if maybe it's a telecom board or something else that has more value to it. If you're ever in doubt, you can always send a picture to chris at boardsort.com to get clarification. Or you can email me and I'll try to help you too. Word on selling RAM as functional components instead of scrap value. BoardSort no longer purchases functional RAM. That was a short experiment that did not play out well. There are people that sell their RAM on eBay or through their own websites, and usually we're talking RAM sticks that are 4 gigabytes or greater. Now these are usually not tested because RAM testing equipment can be very expensive. I have had mixed results selling RAM on eBay, and I no longer do it. It's just not worth my time. You might want to try it. Go look at eBay, see what the current markets are, what the prices are, but do be very honest about selling it as untested unless you have the equipment to test it. Now that doesn't mean you stick it in a computer and it fires up and you can see the RAM. True RAM test equipment is checking all of the cores, all the elements, the speed, and reporting even small errors that could cause problems down the line. Just avoid it. Unless you have paid the money to buy a RAM tester, sell your RAM as untested and don't get yourself in a jam with buyers, on, especially on eBay. Yes, identifying the various boards that we get in the e-way scrapping business can be somewhat challenging, even a little daunting for the new e-way scrapper, but have no fear. You will pick it up over time. I am putting together an entire playlist on board identification, so check back and look for more videos where I discuss with you how to identify the various types of boards we find.